We call the Board of Selectmen meeting, work session, Wednesday, March 29th, 2023, at 6.30, at the Wolfboro Public Library, the Bradley Room. Any reason for non-public tonight? There is not, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Okay, the next thing is reorganized for chairman and vice chairman. And we'll do that tonight so the next meeting we can uh, have a chairman. Uh, generally speaking, what we do is we bring the current vice chair up to chairman. So I'll make a motion that we uh, vote Brad Harriman in as chairman. I'll second. Any discussion on that? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll abstain. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next would be the uh, vice chair. And in the past, Luke has been nominated as vice chair. Would you accept that again? I will. Okay, I'll make a motion that Luke be vice chair. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, the next thing on our agenda is a public hearing for demolition of a town building in accordance with RSA 41-14A. Notice is hereby given to all residents of Wolfboro, New Hampshire that a public hearing purpose of uh, solicit comments regarding demolition or disposal of a town-owned building on town-owned property. Public hearing shall be held Wednesday, March 29th, 2023 at 6.30 and April 5th, 2023 at 6.30. The vote on the matter by the Wolfboro Board of Selectmen shall take place on April 5th, 2023 at 6.30 at the Great Hall and uh, so, Jim, you want to go through this with sure. us? Um, so this is on tax map uh, 218, lot 12, uh, 5 Valley Lane uh, at the intersection of Laner Street. This is a red building uh, about 24 by 40 uh, that has to be removed for the installation of the new Laner Street pump station. Uh, this has been contemplated in the, uh, since the inception of this project and with this project uh, becoming close to imminent, uh, if not happening this um, summer, uh, we, we need to take steps to get that removed. Uh, so we're bringing this in front of you for consideration uh, and to receive public input regarding the demolition of said building. Okay, any comments from the public? Okay, close the public hearing. Board? I have a question. Are we just going to demolish it or are we going to try to dispose of it? Uh, it it's going to be disposed of. A dumpster is going to come in. But there isn't. There's no gonna, value. Nobody wants it. We've tried that. Yeah, we tried that yeah. before. Okay, I just checking. Yeah, I think as long as we tried. Yeah, the last time we had nobody interested in moving it. Yeah. It's one of the oldest buildings around that area. Just wanted to check to make sure. Yeah. Okay, how about a motion? Uh, I think we're, we're supposed to have the next, we're supposed to vote on April 5th. Yeah, we yeah. have to have two hearings. Oh, that's right. Okay. So I'll close the hearing altogether. Okay, during the work session, we have a meeting with Wolfboro Police Commissioner. And this has to do with Depot Street, Center Street, crash mitigation efforts. Okay. Um, so I uh, uh, met with the police chief and the police captain um, this morning. We discussed um, this um, issue that um, that we're having, and and um, it's uh, my understanding that um, there was a recommendation. Of placing some barriers, um, bollards. yeah, bollards, um, <clears throat> along the, uh, the sidewalks to prevent the vehicle from, uh, I guess, going over the uh, the curb and into a building. Um, that was the recommendation of 
the police department and, and the police commission. I think there's a stop sign also to be placed. That's um, right. We had met with uh, uh, Captain Livy before uh, this afternoon, and he gave a report on it, but I defer to his expertise. Yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, my idea would be a stop sign is to cut the speed coming down that yes. hill, yeah. you know, <clears throat> and whether we do it in steps to the, the stop sign first, see how that works, and then put the ballads out. Yeah. It seems like it's wide, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm wondering whether you also want to make a stop, sign, a stop sign coming as you come around the corner by Seven Sons and also going down, so you kind of make it a four-way stop. Three-way stop. Really yeah, it, it, it can get confusing. I didn't see a drawing, so uh, I can just surmise that they did have uh, meetings on it, and there are plans for big? correcting. Um, the base I'm, of the hill. I'm thinking probably right around the base of the hill, um, not too far down. Not so just there. past that, like out that home home care place. Yeah. Before yeah. the apartment building. On the That's right. what I'm thinking. Yeah. Because if you go too far down, then you people, kind of have the back. People are already turning and right. you don't see it. Right. And I think that sidewalk kind of wrap, wraps around a little, so you could, own, you know, kind of go across at that point. Even if you want, you could put a crosswalk there to. Yeah. Brian? I'd also like to say something to muddy the waters, because we talked about this one time. Um, I can't remember why the discussion happened, but we talked about changing the direction of the one-way streets. And it was for another reason, I think. But if you made Bradley's hardware go the opposite direction and that go the opposite direction, everything could still be accessed, but people wouldn't be coming down the hill and taking that quick corner by the nails. They would have to traverse across and wouldn't be taking a corner until they got down to Bradley's and then they would go left or they would go right. Mm -hmm. So it is an option. I know that's that's wicked hard for people because now we're changing everything. Yeah. You have a lot more accidents for a yeah. couple of years with people going the wrong <laughs> yeah. direction. Yeah. But I don't know if it would be a couple of years, but it would be a learning curve for people because they're used to it. But I don't remember why we talked about it, but as a board, we talked about it one time. I think it had something about coming up from the uh, dock site. Mm -hmm. There was a flow. We yeah, were there was something. Maybe it was the charrette mentioned it. It might have been from the charrette at one time saying that it would make a better flow, a better traffic flow, and that we would have more room for parking potentially. And there was a bunch of things that the charrette, I believe, said that it would it would benefit us. Now, if, if the force wants to look at that, and then anybody wants to walk it, and if it has a, a potential, I don't know. But it's just a, a suggestion. It's kind of off the wall. Well, why don't we try Linda's idea, because I like that. It's kind of a stepped approach to this and it could solve the problem, which is a couple stop signs, and it'll get people to slow down in that general area anyways. And then go on to the ballads if we st are still seeing. Exactly. Right. Because they're coming down fast. When I talked to the woman in the nail salon, she felt it was the speed that they come down and somebody's backing up and they just. Yeah, so yeah we talked to her together that day. We did. If we can just slow it down and do it in a phased approach. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, also thinking about you know coming down that hill, put a stop sign up. If we put one over in the normally they're on the right hand side over by like where Luke said it, you know, just below the home care center. But being as that's a one way street going down, I think you might want to consider putting one on the left side too, because people coming down, they have a row of parking spaces there where the sign's going to be beyond that, and they're more looking toward making that left turn anyway to go out by the post office yep. there. So. I think it'd be wise yeah. to put one on that left side too, so we have one on each side of that street coming down. Yeah. Make Good it a little more visible. And maybe we can get ZPW to paint a white stop line stop as well. Yeah. 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 To make it clear that that's put that in the road. So And add the word stop on it too. Yeah. Yep. Whatever it takes. Whatever yeah. yeah. Probably this year for sure. <laughs> make it a crosswalk too? I cross I think also a crosswalk would be Because that slows people down when yeah. they and that would allow you to go from across because you really can't. You go to the by Harmony, you have to either walk up the stairs that was by Hatches, but you have if you had a crosswalk, you would get to the other side. Yeah, yeah we talked about bollards with the woman at the time, too. We have to make sure. Remember, we were concerned about um, if, if they'd still be able to shovel the sidewalk correctly in the winter and and some other things. We'll do it in phase, yeah. and if this I'll doesn't like work, and then see how, how that works out. Yeah. So, 
So if, if I'm understanding the board correctly, if I'll reach out to the director of public works, have him put together a proposal for stop signs, painting, stop bars. I'm not sure if I will have him be able to have that in front of you for April the 5th, which is next week, but uh, certainly for the second meeting in April. Yeah, if we put a, yeah. a crosswalk there too, you know, if we get one of those uh, things that... Uh, in the road. Yeah, because that will also just slow down everybody yeah. in that general yeah. area. Yeah. Yeah, you do one of those, whatever those things are that... And because now, you know, now that, now that the coffee shop's there too, you know, the fear is there's someone coming down that hill, flying down that hill, because people walk are walking across that crosswalk more now than when it was a real estate officer of the, uh, the the photo store. So, you know, it's just uh, it's a it's a good idea, anyways. Okay, well, let's at least try that, or at least maybe Steve, uh, somebody have, could give us a diagram. Yep, I'll have a proposal for you for either the fifth. Or it's okay. probably going to be the nineteenth, based on timing. But I I don't think they're going to paint it right away, anyway. So. Actually, Dave, I'm going to take back part of my comment there on that on that hill there. I think I made a statement that that's one way coming yeah. down, but that, that's two-way traffic yeah. there. Yeah. So yeah. I just wanted to know if that stop sign would still work having it on the left side, too, or not. But yeah, I think it thing. probably would, because they're going to be able to see it easier. Yeah. yeah. For people who each other for a year. Okay. Time parking ordinance. So um, I was asked to uh, to be here. Um, as a representative of the, of the PD, when I first heard about this, um, I, I actually took a, an interest in it and did a little bit of digging on my on my own um, into uh, paid parking. Um, and I know it can be kind of a it, it would potentially be a new thing if uh, if implemented. Um, so I know you know change is, is difficult, and um, but I tried to look at it. Um, you know, in a uh, objective manner and, and uh, taking things in consideration. At the end of the day, um, I think it's something definitely worth exploring. Um, I believe the uh, um, the chief also um, and, and the commission uh, recommended this route um, as a uh, as a as an option. Clearly, the uh, the main problem um, is supply and demand. <clears throat> we have a limited amount of parking spaces in town. It's um, always been an issue as far as back as I could remember uh, growing up. Um, in addition to the uh, limited inventory of, of parking spaces is, you know, people like coming to Wolfboro. They always have and they always will. Um, so I don't necessarily think that um, if something like this was uh, implemented that that's going to deter people from, from coming to Wolfboro. Um, I, like many of you know, uh, you folks and, and, and others, um, I'll go to Portsmouth and I have no issues spending, you know, money for parking. It's just, it's expected. So uh, me personally, it, it doesn't, it doesn't deter me. So um, let's see here. Um, the only thing I look at is the towns around the lake and who has time parking and who doesn't. And the only one I see is the city of Laconia. Yeah. I could be wrong. I haven't called and looked at every town, but unless something has changed in the last year or so that I've been driving around, um, and Portsmouth is a city, and Dover is a city, and Concord is a city, and um, and they're big, and I understand that ha them having meters and kiosks and all that, and it works great. Um, I just don't know if we're ready to be the first town other than, than the city of Laconia that charges. I'm not sure. Okay. Luke? I mentioned this to Jim. Uh, what I thought would be could be an it would be, could be an interesting. We could do a like a pilot program at the town docks with either an app or a kiosk. So we don't invest a bunch in infrastructure before we know if we're actually going to go forward with this. We could do a summer trial hypothetically with either an app or a kiosk, and just have it be the town docks. I, I think people deserve the ability to come into town and know they're going to find a parking spot, especially when they want to go grab takeout, run into a store like, like the shoe store and grab shoes. It's hard because sometimes there's no parking in town. So, but it, investing in that infrastructure is a, it's a large expense, one, depending on whether it's an app or a kiosk type system. So, 
you know, I if the, you know, I thought maybe we could do a test down there. It wouldn't be an over overburden some act upon the police department either to patrol that mm -hmm. and just enforce down there. And it would be a paid system and you know, maybe if we could limit people to an hour or two hours and keep people moving so that when you do come to town there's a spot where you can figure out if you want to go grab something, you're gonna have a spot. Jim actually mentioned bringing back the to me, the, the, the 10 minute parking signs so that people could actually run into a restaurant and grab takeout. Uh, it's hard, you know, because yeah. a lot of the employees park in town. And I think Linda was the only person that rode that shuttle last <laughs> year, <laughs> you know, f from, from this high school. So we have to encourage people through other means, I think, to not park in that corridor. But I do realize it's a big investment. But you know, maybe we could try something like that. I'd be, and then maybe if it works this year, it could be great. Linda. Yeah, are you talking about doing it all year long, or are you talking about just in the summer? I think about just in the summer. Okay, I, that, I, th I feel differently if we're talking about just in the summer. I do have concerns about it around the post office. People go in there and get their mail, and I think people are not going to be happy to have to put money in the meter, and I don't, you know, whether we can have like 10 minute parking around the post office so people can do that. It, I think we would get a pushback if they had to pay to go get their mail. Um, I like the idea of if it doesn't cost us too much to give a trial. It makes sense to see the reaction and, and, and try something. We need to do something, and I don't know if there's another way that we can um, do it. At, Brian, you had talked to me about marking tires, um, and we got the information from uh, the court cases, but you had another way other than physically marking the tires. Yeah, I called the Department of Safety, the Department of Transportation, the Bureau of Transportation, and the Attorney General's Office to find out if the state of New Hampshire has had any town or city or any police department that has received a complaint about tire chalking. The, the resounding answer was no, not yet in our state. It hasn't happened. That being said, I can understand where the police department doesn't want to be involved in something that could be controversial. Um, I did find out that there is alternatives. There's a system out there called digital tire chalking. And um, an officer would have a handheld device. He would take a picture of the front tire, a picture of the license plate. Have you seen this system before? I actually, I, I think I, I learned about it today when I was speaking to the parking director in, in Portsmouth, and he mentioned it to me. Um, he, uh, it, they don't do that, from what I understand, in Portsmouth. Um, I know that four seacoast towns in Maine use it. Um, up in the Finger Lakes region, they're using it in some of their resort towns. Seneca, New York is one of them that's using it. So you take a quick picture. If we have two-hour parking, then the officer now has everything on his um, device, his handheld device. In two hours, it notifies him of which cars are still in the same spot. The officer can go back, take a picture of the tire, take a picture of the license plate. The handheld device prints out the ticket, they put it on the car, and it's all done. The, um, they don't have to physically touch a car with a, with a piece of chalk. Um, they don't have to drive back and get out and look at tires a second time and see, is this the same car? Is this? A, it's all done automatically for them. Um, they've, um, it, it takes the administrative part out of the picture. So now you don't have, have to have an administrator in your um, department no, monitoring everything. Everything goes into the cloud. Everything is recorded. You have a complete record of, of, of everything and you can change it and move with it on the fly. Um, so it is a way to, to do it and streamline the process and make it so that you use half as much labor, half as much time, and, and you can not be worried about infringing on somebody's constitutional rights. Yeah, um, yeah and, and to kind of go back on the, uh, the chalking of the tires, we, that, that's not a practice that we won't do yeah. um, for uh, various reasons that I, that I don't really need to get into, but um, but as, as you mentioned, like streamline, um, you know we're uh, um, you know we're we're down a, a couple of officers right now, and and in the, into the summer we'll be uh, hopefully training a couple of them, um, you know, and and uh, so there is five thousand dollars in the budget too to have a um, a part time person who got one handheld device and just did it for. Um, 22 hours a week 
during the summer months. Yeah, and, and that, that brings up another potential issue, finding someone to do that. Um, I, I would prefer if we could uh, uh, deploy a, uh, a patrol officer down there. Mm -hmm. you know, in, in the past, we've had civilians down there, and uh, you know, quite frankly, they're disrespected. Um, it's not a, uh, an envious task to, to go down and write visitors uh, parking tickets. Right. I, can, I can appreciate that, but unfortunately, some of the, uh, the civilians that, that we have um, uh, put down there, it's, they get beat up pretty good. Um, yeah. But to, uh, to kind of go back on, on streamlining, which, which I think is important for, for the PD, um, to, um, I like the pilot program, and I like the, the, the location, too, because it's, it's premium uh, parking. Uh, right down there, but to deploy an officer down there every couple hours, scan license plates and find out if there's a violation. To me, that seems like it's a little bit more streamlined than than the photograph, the taking of the photograph. And um, uh, but that's just my personal opinion. I, I just learned about it today, and um, um, the individual that mentioned it to me was more or less steering me away from that and and suggesting. Um, just the, the phone app is the way to go. They're actually in Portsmouth going to be doing away with the meters. Um, and the kiosks are expensive. I believe you rent them or there's a, there's a fee associated with having one. Mm -hmm. um, but there's upkeep and eventually those are going to get phased out. Um, and it's going to be all done with a cell phone. The only issue I have with the cell phone, and I did talk to a lot of people about, about this, is... Um, we do have the um, oldest population in the state of New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. And we do have a lot of guests and summer residents that come that are also older. Um, not everybody is tech savvy with apps on smartphones. That's why when we put in the, um, here's an example, we put in the um, EV chargers in downtown. And I pushed for having a credit card swipe in it. So now those can be used with either an app, um, with a QR code, or with a credit card swipe. 80 to 90% of all of our charges, and we're getting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of charges, sometimes a month, they're all credit card swipes. Because people are familiar with it and they understand it. Mm -hmm. um, they, if, with the option of an app or putting their card in, people choose their cards. Um, so that's the only concern that I would have is an app could be very difficult for some people to figure out. Yeah, it, oh, sorry. No, you go ahead. Um, no, and, and that, that's clearly a, a, a common, um, you know, question. It's like, you know, what about the uh, elderly population and, you know, their ability to have a cell phone with the app on it and, and navigate through it you know honestly it, it would be a learning curve for me I'm not gonna yeah. not gonna um, you know disagree with that but um, there could be other alternatives with a kiosk to um, you know maybe after a, a pilot program um, and and find out what are some of the issues and that might have popped up to make it a little bit more easier for that um, that uh, population and, and maybe Putting a kiosk here or there might be an okay um, idea. I don't know. Yeah, I, I guess I would kind of like to get a little further away from the parking and the fact that we really need officers downtown. Yep. As I rode that bus and went down, I, I heard that more than anything else. Yep. And so, are you going to have staffing down in the downtown yes. this summer? So, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, so, uh, what one of the roles that I have at the PD is scheduling. Uh, again, a pretty, um, not a very glorifying task to do, but somebody has to do it. So um, with, with the current staffing that we have, um, you know, right now it, it looks like we're gonna probably have um, a mountain bike officer down there. Maybe not every day, but I'm shooting for every day, but things pop up, you mm -hmm. know, um, and, and cause scheduling issues. But um, the, the plan is, for me to have a, a mountain bike officer down there for a decent uh, part of the day, um, hopefully seven days a week, but um, there might be a little uh, issues here or there. But yeah, Linda, we, we feel really good about that. That we're going to be able to accomplish that this year. Um, we're really good about it. And you know, we have you know, the officers in the academy will be back in ten, ten, two weeks, ten uh, weeks. Yeah, it's uh, sometime in like the beginning 
ish of June. Yeah, so he'll be back. So he'll be back for the summer. The legal. Uh, we just presented uh, an interviewee with a, a, um, a letter, so we're, we're going through his background now. Fantastic candidate. Mm -hmm. um, I, I hope he works out. I think he's going to work out. Uh, and that'll put us, you know, then we're taking the school resource officers out of the school and putting them on the road. We'll be able to do what we need to do. So, so we have a mountain bike, and I know that the businesses down there will be pleased to have that back. I yeah. think they really would like that. Yeah. And you, nice, you got a, I think a seven thousand dollar grant yeah. to have fantastic. that. Yeah, it's um, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, and that's a real win for all of us. Um, but I think also if we do this with the parking, I think they also really need that parking enforced this summer mm -hmm. down in the downtown. And whether we have to get what Brian is talking about to uh, to Mark or to not mock the tires, but do it in that way. You know, Kathy Eaton, the, the trolley, um, if, if it doesn't change, that option is going to be gone. And if people, if we don't make them not park in the downtown all day, sure. we're not going to have an option another year. And so to me, this summer is when we have to do it. I have no problem putting the meters down at the dockside, but I think we need to do the parking throughout the town. And I'm more than willing to pick up the price of the ticket, which is the other thing I heard was people were saying, oh, the employer will just pay the tickets. Well, yeah. they put it higher enough. Yeah. Um, and, <clears throat> and the trolley will try to accommodate a longer time if people use it. One of the things I did see starting to happen with the trolley is people from Laconia who wanted to go on to Molly, who was picking up Jolly at the high school going down and picking up Molly, there was more of that, which is starting to have some visitors coming into Wolfboro by trolley, which I think is another plus. So I just think that's really important um, for our businesses and for one of our key businesses, who I think in the summer is going to be our long-term solution sure. no, to I, our parking. I think we, we, yeah, I, and, yeah, and I think you know if it, if it comes down to time-wise, or if we don't have enough time to put a new mechanism into place, like one such as Brian's talking about. If we have, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, the, the, the chalking, that's just at the Court of Appeals level, correct? No. That has been decided in the Supreme Court? It went at the Supreme Court. It went to the uh, Fourth Circuit. And the Ninth. And, and the Sixth. Sixth. Okay. Yeah, the yeah. Fourth Circuit in, and the sixth. in Michigan and the Sixth in New York. No, correct? no, Ninth. Ninth, yes, thank ninth. you. Yeah, it says the sixth and the ninth. Yeah, so the court of the appeals. Ninth. Yeah, so it's not yeah. at that yeah, top one, level yet. Yeah, one, um, one said that it was not constitutional, that it was one. unconstitutional, and one said that they erred in their decision, and it is constitutional for officers, and they it, they should have that tool as the ability okay. to do their job. Yeah. And what's funny is you, you you talked earlier about the mechanism taking the picture of the, the plate. Yeah. That's been challenged yes. too. That's been challenged, and like you know, when when laptops for us came out, you know, offices would you know park somewhere in an intersection, and the car goes by to put the plate in, right, just as it drives by. That's been challenged, and you can't do that anymore for no reason at all. And you know, people challenge the. Uh, I know the state super guards the tolls, the pictures taking picture of your plate, mm -hmm. and because people worried the constitutionality of that, where the police can go pull that at any time and say, hey, who's going through there? Right, because it does create a record that you're going through there. So, you know, let the state police do that, like, say, for a homicide crime, and they think the person went through there at a certain time, you know, they have to apply for a, a search warrant for that. They can't just go and take that material. And so the photos have also been challenged. You know, Dean and I disagree on which one of those two circuit courts are going to win that argument. You know, I feel that, you know, there's a lot of case law that says, and I'm sure they've relied on this, that, um, when you drive out in your car on the road, you have an expectation of privacy, but not the same level you do in your home. That's been well established. Yeah. It, there's a, a, a mm -hmm. difference there. So I, I personally feel that chalking, mm, you're, you're in a public space, um, you know, and Dean also talked about, well, you know, maybe it's a crime, it's criminal mischief, like kids, you know, but there's no criminal intent, right? You need criminal intent to commit a crime, right? It's called mens rea, right? Mm -hmm. It's not and, lasting. Yeah, yeah. And so my guess is I think we're, we're going to be okay in that, you know, somewhere down the line. Because you have a, a limited uh, reasonable to, to be, you know, yeah, yeah, to be free of, of that stuff, not the same level that you do in your home. 
because you are taking your car out there, the play is visible, and you're on a public way, um, so there's not the same re you know, level of privacy that there would be in, in your home. So I, I think it's going to go that way. But nothing's easy, is it? No, never. <laughs> so, so the, the gentleman I talked to who owns the company, well, he doesn't own it. He's, he's the, um, he is their executive technical sales engineer or whatever. He's a um, 35 or 31 year retired chief of police. And he represents the company. Sure. And I did ask him that company about constitutionality of taking pictures of um, tires and license plates. And he said it's never been challenged in court. Yeah. Oh no, it has. Not, not that way. You know that in, in that yeah. application. Mm -hmm. Oh, but it definitely has. Because I was working. You know when the, all the other stuff came to play. When the tolls started taking a picture of your plate. And, mm -mm. You know, because the state police did just go help themselves to that at one point. And, and that was a no-no. But you know, every state's gonna be different. And you know, most likely they'll end up being a, a state, and you know, this state always rules on the side of caution, you know, towards you know, protection of privacy. They may go that way and say, yeah, we don't, we don't love that, uh, but we'll see. There's also a possibility of an accusation of profiling because you have out-of-state cars that are there and they get a disparate you know, uh, number of summonses, it would give grounds for some kind of a challenge, just saying. Again, you never can say yeah. that people won't do these things. Well, there is a disproportionate number of out-of-state plates here during the summer. It's just the way it is. There's more visitors. That's what I'm saying. There's more than visitors than there are people. Yeah. But I've heard, and I have for years, and particularly uh, the last two years, because I've spent a lot of time in downtown, that it's everybody. It's not just the people from out of town. It's the people who live in town, the people who work in downtown, and the people from out of town all saying there's never any place to park because they'll go buy a place and the same cars are there every day, all day long, or they'll go buy in the morning and then they'll go buy three hours later and they'll say the same three cars are there and I still couldn't mm -hmm. park to get into the Yum Yum shop. Yeah. And, and that's the problem because people just don't, they don't have the consideration that they used to. Um, I, I do think maybe uh, looking at increase in the fine amount is probably a, yes. a prudent move for a number of different reasons. But what, what I noticed was um, I, I believe that the, uh, the, the ticket now is $20. 25 yes. yeah. Yeah, so right. right around. Okay. okay. Um, you know, which I wouldn't want to get a $25 parking ticket. But, um, you know, the, uh, when, when, you, when you think about a contested ticket from start to finish and the amount of um, hands that have played a role in that to the uh, to the very end at, at court. Um, there's um, pretrial conferences which basically put the uh, the summons the the uh, the citation um, on file. Um, so it it's not a really good way, I guess, of doing business. Um, that the town is investing a lot of money in that that ticket that is just going to go away anyways. Well, I can tell you personally that the town of Portland. They have kiosks going into their parking lots. You use a credit card. We thought we'd done everything right. Two days later, I get a fine request that we didn't pay for the parking lot, which was thirty-five dollars. Mm -hmm. You can believe it. The fine was forty-three dollars. So I just paid the fine and said, "Hey." I learned from that. Yeah. <laughs> right, but right. the other, and they had a picture of my car with the license plate. Mm. Okay, so I know it was my car. Mm -hmm. But the other thing tonight on Channel 9 in Hampton, as of April 1st, they have brand new kiosks because they've had that punch system for years mm -hmm. down there. But they have a brand new system starting April 1st this year. It can all be done from your cell phone. If you're on the beach and your time is coming up, you can just use your cell phone and reprogram back to the kiosk and get another how many hours that you need for parking. Yeah, That's a brand new system, brand new this year. They're starting at April 1st, so just you might look at it or we might check into it, somebody, to see how that one, how that works and maybe what they do with their old ones. We, all we need is probably one for all of Dockside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We just have to number each space. That's the key to it. 
the, the uh, my understanding with the kiosks, I think the only problem with that for us, they require power and getting the power to them mm -hmm. um, for winter heat and for operating of the credit card system, depending on where we put it, could be a mm -hmm. challenge. Well, just a suggestion. I don't know if we're going to look into yeah. it. We got to look into the power supply as well. So Could, I'm, I'm might be able to come off one of the one of the lamp posts. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe you could put it right beside one yeah. up on that seat. So it sounds like to what I'm hearing is uh, we got to enforce parking this summer. Absolutely. Downtown, we got to enforce the parking warrants. We have probably need to raise the parking fine, and then at the same time, do we do we want to try something at Dockside? Yeah. Where you know, I feel like if people come to town, even even if we have parking enforced, like it'd be nice to be able to guarantee to almost find a parking spot. And I think you could do it at Dockside if you charge people enough for parking, limit it to either an hour or two hours. That way, there's is a almost a guaranteed spot because no one's going to want to pay. I mean, I guess they would. I mean, yeah, I think some of them would. Be. <laughs> yeah. So we 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 ran into that when we again I go back to the EV charges. We ran into that. I made the silly recommendation. So people are allowed to park there for three hours and charge. Mm -hmm. And what if they keep their car there? There's something called an idle fee. And so I made the silly recommendation to the energy committee. Let's just charge them five dollars an hour for every time. You know, every hour they're there. That's double what they would be paying if they were charging. And the energy committee said no. Twenty dollars an hour if they stay there. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, that's a lot of money. And they're like, do you think twenty dollars an hour is a lot for somebody who shows up with a ninety-five thousand dollar Tesla from Connecticut? Mm -hmm. To them, that's what they pay for every day, parking yeah. their car yeah. anywhere they go. So we do have to figure, and that's why the, you're, you're right, Officer, the um, Officer Morley, that the twenty-five dollars doesn't have any teeth because they mm -hmm. leave their car there for um, six hours, yeah. and it ends up being four dollars an hour. That's that's cheap parking to a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Chef, uh, I just uh, Plymouth State University, by the way, is seventy-five dollars. Right. Oh. Their parking uh, tickets seventy-five dollars. I mean, if we really don't want them to do it. Seventy-five would be even better than yeah. so. It, but really, it's just—it's the parents' paying. Well, yeah. but yeah. here they won't be. <laughs> is, there an R, is, there, is there an RSA that um, has a, a maximum that we can charge for a parking ticket? I think there may be in the town ordinance. Is there a limit on? on I think there is. I, wanted, we're, we're, I could be wrong. I wanted to say that the uh, the highest was a hundred bucks. Yeah, I think it is to, to be under the town ordinance limit. We you know, if you made it, because I know you can write a state statute right. parking ticket also, but we don't want that. We want the town ordinance once we go. Well, the get to right. fun we stay here. We need right? to check the ordinance. Yeah, yeah. So I, mean, I back when I was working, it definitely was 100. I don't know yeah. if it has increased at all, but that was it. After that, it would have to become a state fine, yeah. yeah. Talking to the state, they said if we change the number of hours mm -hmm. down, that we have to notify them and they have to rewrite their the, the regulation. You're saying for our uh, those parking um, spots on Route 9. 109. But all the other roads, if we Correct. did dockside, it Total would not be affected this year. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'd kind of like to know? I'd like to know w what we can do this year and how much it will cost. If we try to put a kiosk down there, what is that going to do us? If we can get this handheld where we can do it. What's that going to cost us? Can we just chalk the tires? What will that cost us? And then I think I have some better information to know how to go forward. Yeah, and Jim put out a request, I believe, to the chief today, asking him for a five-year average of what we've paid, you know, what, what we've written for tickets and how much revenue we've received. Now, it's going to be all skewed because you have the pandemic. And you know that that just made everything crazy. Yeah. Um, and last year, who knows, you know, with short manpower, how much happened last year. But um, from the numbers that I did, um, there's going to be an initial cost to get, um, but the guy was talking to me about having 12 handheld units. We don't need 12 handheld units. We need one or two. Mm -hmm. um, so it would be significantly less. Um, and then there is a, uh, like a software fee in, uh, that you have to go, you know, down the road every year, there's a maintenance fee for it. But um, he's like, if you guys wrote, you know, 100 tickets a year, he goes, the system pays for itself. Sure. 
So you don't make any money, but what you'll do is you'll get the parking in order. So people will now realize, geez, if I, I'm gonna get a ticket. And, right. and it will take a, a learning curve, and some people will be upset, but maybe we extend it to three hours when we start enforcing so that people have more time. Two hours is tough if you go to go to a restaurant in, the, in this time of the year. My wife and I can buzz in and out of, out of um, Back Bay Boathouse in an hour and 40 minutes, no problem. In the summer, if you have to wait 40 minutes to get in, then you get a seat, then you eat, and then you're out, it's three hours. Yeah, well there could be different zones. Well, correct. Too. Like correct. Dockside could be an hour, hypothetically. Correct. So you knew you'd get a spot in Dockside if you were coming down and get buy yeah. shoes. Yep. You know, hypothetically, you know, whatever else, go run to the post office and you get the door doesn't know the parking around. You know, all the other things people do get take out yeah. and run out. You know, these should be guaranteed to get park and drop somebody off there, go get ice cream, that's an hour. Our I'm municipal sure. lots are free, correct? Correct. Yeah. So our municipal lots are free. Dockside maybe is is an is an hour. Um, the one oh nine A can be three hours. We can mix and match it. What I like about Brian's thing is that then you don't have to have an officer walking and yes. checking the chalk. They're going to be no notified. They'll be notified when the car. So if the, if there is the, if the bike patrol is down there, you know he's doing other stuff, and now he's getting notification once an hour that these three cars are over the limit. Yeah, very efficient. Yeah, he can go Did they right give you a, t a timeline, Brian, about when they could have one available? How, if you order it, how long does it take? The guy called tonight said, "Do you want me to uh, zoom in on your?" Um, Town meeting, I said we can't. We're, we're in a wrong location. So um, he he will be. He said he will zoom in at any time, and he will come and he will do a demo. And he said it can be a, a quick turnaround. If I can, um, we did try. The chamber asked the board of selectmen to do a four-hour um, time limit for the parking down there. The next year, they asked to go back to two because you didn't get the turnover. Mm -hmm. The four hours you can go out and, you know. Hey, three is right in the middle. Well, I, that's what they had from what they saw. So um, to me, I think those in the downtown core should be two hours. All you have yep. to do is drive up just about to the town hall and you're all free again. <laughs> it's a very small area, yeah, it it, it free. It no, there's no time, it's a very small. And we need to do a better job of letting people know that and yeah. where our, our parking lots are. That's where we want them to go. Yeah. Unfortunately, all the restaurants are right in downtown and that's where all the parking spots are right along the street in downtown. Yeah. And, that's, and that is tough. That's the only, the, the, and that's why we set our, here we go, back to the EV charges. That's why we set them at three hours because we said somebody parks their car, goes to eat dinner, let's give them three hours to get dinner, have an ice cream, buy a t-shirt, whatever they want to do, and then get back to their car before, you know, so it's not the bum's rush. Mm -hmm. are, we, are we thinking of doing it from what time in the morning to what time at night? Which is the other issue, you know, when you start talking about, you know, lunchtime, mm -hmm. and it would yeah. be during the business, you would, might yeah. send it one time and you might do another time after. Nine to six. Oh, Dolly Parton, nine to five. <laughs> Either way. But that, I think that's the other thing we have to figure yeah. out is when yeah. do we want them and how long and and yeah. have you folks already discussed like the time limits seasonally? Is it Memorial Day to Labor Day or what do we think? I think about it's that? June fifteenth to um, uh, Columbus Day. Yeah. Columbus I think that's what it is. Okay. I think that's the time period. Yeah, I think nine to five. You think about it, if you go even in the summer, you get on there like at six o'clock. It's pretty well quieted yeah. down. You can get a pocket space with an ice cream and mm -hmm. where you can't really during the day. That would help dinner yeah. people too, yeah. because then you know it, it is going to take three. I mean, you don't want to. You know, dump your food down after you've had to wait 40 minutes to get into a restaurant and then run out to your car so you don't get a, a well, $75 you're not, ticket. You're not going to have that wait anymore. We're going to have four new restaurants yeah. before you do. Yeah. Um, I really like that short term parking spaces. I've heard from the woman who uh, has Winnie Paw that when that five minute parking space was there for her customers who have to just run in and come out with a big bag helped her business tremendously. And I think we also did it. For takeout. Yeah, in front of Nolan's, I think it was very Yeah, helpful. and so we may want to have a couple, you know, yeah. five or ten minute parking spaces to support those businesses. Yeah, yeah and I would say you're all right about the uh, post office because people will park for six hours in front of the post office and then it becomes, then somebody who wants to go to the post office has to park down in the Glendon Street lot to walk up to the post office. Right. <laughs> Which is, 
then, then, then that becomes problematic. Mm -hmm. And you should be able to get most of your work, you know, maybe it's a, maybe the post office is a half an hour spot. Because you can go into the post office sometime and there's eight people I think in it front says of you. 15 minutes in front I, of the It, signs, is, it, it? it does, it in does. front of the post office, 15, 15 minutes right yeah. in front of it. Yep, yep it is. <laughs> so, okay. Do we need to have a public hearing if we're gonna raise the prices of yeah, I think, I, I guess yeah, I was going to say is what we really need is find out what the price is, yep. see if we can get that. And if that, and raising, we would want to do raising the fee and uh, changing the time all at the same time at a public hearing, right? So we really need to put the packet together. Mm -hmm. yeah, we fine. should probably see a draft of it before we go to a Find out what like towns around the lake are charging for parking tickets. You're good at calling around. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I'd like to, I mean, because... Go, you're I, good at that. We're giving I, you yeah. the opportunity to do yeah, that. Yeah, I just, I, I like us to be um, the same in as much as we can as, uh, as our neighbors, because we don't want to be looked upon as someone that's gouging our neighbors or... But remember, we're for a smaller town, so we have a much condensed core. I mean, a town like Meredith has a lot of parking because they have a vast area. Yeah, I think, and I'm with you, Luke. We're trying to solve a problem in our downtown yeah. core, and yeah. how do we do that, and what is the best way to do it's that? It's 100 years. But old. I still think if you call around, yeah. that'll give us something to compare yeah. to. I think yeah. that makes sense too. There are town meetings from the 1800s where people were complaining that there were yep. too many carriages and horses in downtown and no place to put their carriages and horses. And that's a true story. Mm -hmm. So this is nothing new. No. Did they take pictures of the horses? They did. <laughs> Chop no, no. that leg. Back, yeah, right. Back, the tail. Back, yeah, right. back in the day, they might have taken things into their own hands. Three carrots. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when, if the board's all right with it and the commission's all right with it, um, to authorize myself and the planner to work with Sergeant Maloney, um, we'll try to put something together to get back to you, hopefully, um, Late April. Okay. For consideration, if that works for you. Um, I guess one of the questions I would want to ask the board right now, where I believe we have three handicap accessible spots in the um, dockside parking lot area, do you want any provisions made for those handicap accessible spots? It's actually four. Is there four? Yeah. I yeah. Look at the Bob actually just brought that up. The, the kiosk, I'm, I'm, my guess is they're built for that. But if something does get out of a car with a wheelchair, can they get it and, and make it function? I don't know. Yes. Yeah. And also I mean, I access for sure. handicap because yeah. Yeah. They're, they are entitled to get a spot, any spot that's available, you know, and. Mm -hmm. um, and there's no time limit. Exactly. And no charge. Okay. So that, that, that's so what that's, I'm wondering is yeah. Yeah. legally. Well, that's what they, they need to find out from this. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Those spots. Okay. Yeah. The other question I had, and again, I'm not sure what the answer is. A summons is produced by a handheld unit. Yeah. Is that meet the requirements of what's the uh, for the town of Wolfboro compared to their summonses, so which are filled up by you? I think that's what it will we'll have, have, have the police. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It'll yeah. Have the police that's department. It's a cautionary note. Yes. yes. It will have the police department's address, phone number. It will have a website where the person can pay online. It will have a mailing address where they can mail it into the police department, um, or they can so they can pay it in any way, shape, or form. So it gives it, it and the police department will will work with the company and they will customize their ticket to be exactly what you want mm -hmm. on your ticket. Well, that's the question that we have yeah. because I've seen them the other way. Are you going to check into that, Brian? Yes. And um, I can have that gentleman, um, if, our, if our next meet, if you, if you want to, I, well, the fifth, he said he's doing a demo in, a, in another state for another company, but um, another town. But I can have him show up at our next board meeting in April, and he can show up remotely, and he can go through as many questions as, as everybody has. Well, 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 and I can forward him to you first if you wanted to discuss it with him. Yeah, I don't have any issues talking to him. I, like I said, yeah, I just I learned about it today. That. 
If yeah. that's easy to do. It's but very do, easy to do. He do, was going to do it tonight, but I said we can't. We can't zoom you in. There's no way to zoom you in. But but maybe we want, if he's going to give us the whole thing, not to take up a board meeting, but as we are tonight, do a special meeting mm -hmm. and sit down. And maybe there's also another program of doing it another way yes. with the kiosk, and we can sit down and take a look at it all and gather the information in a meeting that's yep. just focused on that again. session. Yeah. Yeah. And no matter what the program is you folks decide to use, uh, do you, it, has a preference been established? Is it, it you feel strongly about a meter person, type of person, or an officer actually performing those tasks? Have you thought about in depth about that at all? How you? Yeah. Whatever you well, think is it's best. It's all comes down to money. Yeah. It comes down to money in your budget. Yeah, yeah that's what I feel. Yeah. Depending yeah. on what direction we want to take and give it back to you. Yeah, there's five thousand dollars in your budget. It's, it's money. I mean, let's face it. Yeah, there's five thousand dollars in the budget. Maybe it can be a, a stipend to the bike officer who's in downtown, anyways, because he has additional duties to do. Right. He's now in charge of, of writing the tickets, also. Well, I wouldn't mention that about it. the people feel strongly, right, about having an officer down there. So yes, they rather do. than pay two people, I, yeah, my tax dollar, I'd rather pay one. Yeah, and and that he or she can do so many more tasks than just that meet yeah. person can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I so agree. That's efficient. And this, right we're, we're not looking for perfection. Yeah. Not every single person who parks and is there for two hours and six minutes is going to get a ticket, and that's not the intention. That's luck. The the <laughs> yeah. that's luck. The, yeah. the <laughs> intention. The intention, the, 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 intention the, the intention is so that people know that um, you need to clear out of your spot um, is. As soon as you possibly can, you know, when, when you're done your business and your dinner and whatever, so that someone else has a chance to, to visit the town. When, when any of us go out to eat at a restaurant, we get a table and we sit. We don't take that table for the whole night. Even if, even if somebody doesn't bother you, usually you say, hey, we've been here for like two and a half hours. Let's, let's move it to somebody else's house or home or something, you know, because there's people waiting at the door. And that's just... That's civilian. Yeah. That's what we do. Yeah, I think the system you're, you're talking about, too, I mean, that is fantastic. That notifies the officer. I mean, he or she could be all the way down to the museum, right museum, on that bike and get that and come all the way. I mean, they could still cover a lot of ground and knowing, yeah. hey, it takes two minutes to drive that bike back there. Yeah. Uh, so that's an efficient use of tax dollars, mm -hmm. I think, and it would make sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we've beaten that one up yeah. pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, is the board okay if I yep. work with Sorry, the Maloney and the commissioner. Oh, I'm concerned. Anybody else have a yeah. yeah, and then you'll we'll have another meeting to no sit down and. Yeah, we'll see what we can put together, and uh, yeah, we'll see if it's either a special meeting or the. I would think the other way, we'd be able to get anything together at all would be the 19th, but it, that might be a little aggressive. Yep. Yep. Okay. Accuracy of budget descriptions. What's that one? So I think there were some board members that wanted to discuss with the with the budget or with the um, police commission um, the arrival of the budget, some of the descriptions and the timeliness of um, the items coming in and the backup information. Um, I think we all learned a lesson this year with the SRL. It seemed to come in late, um, and it was overwhelmingly approved by the voters. Um, but it was challenging for the board and for the budget committee because it, it seemed like it was a struggle to get the, the information. Um, and I think there's a conversation piece that wants to be had relative to that. I'm more than willing to start. One of the things I did is, Dean did a wonderful job. In the front of our book, he gave us all the strategic goals and everything. And in here was what he was going to do for 2020. Three, and it did say the SRO officer, so I did know that that was something on your um, agenda. But what I found it coming in was that it, it was thrown together at the last minute. At one point you were going to do it, then it got pulled off, then it came back. And so the Warren article that we had talked about the school board putting it in their budget. They hadn't even dealt with it yet. Yeah. And then when we came to meet with you, you know, um, it was kind of like, well, don't you know that this is important? Well, we did, but there is a process. 
And then we also, when we came back to the budget committee, it got contentious. And what surprised me, because I did go to the school board meetings, the budget committee, the board of selectmen, never got the same presentation or the staff at any of our meetings that were at the school district. And I went to the first one, and when Mary talked, it became clear to me why you would wanted what she did, how important it was. We as the Board of Selectmen or the Budget Committee never heard that. And so it just, it seemed like it was piecemeal, it wasn't the same to everybody. If you had had that backup information right from the beginning, the statistics, I don't think we would have had anywhere near the questions and the discussions and kind of at each other because people were questioning. One of the things I learned before I, well, I was uh, working um, to try to get the schools, Carpenter School and Crescent Lake School through, and the superintendent at that time said to me, well, one of the things when I go to any kind of a meeting like this, I make sure I have every possible question that somebody might ask me the answer to as best I can, and I think that's what we miss. And the more you can put that together as a department, and as a commission, the, the better it'll be for all of us. So that's just where I came from on that. Sure. Yeah. Point well taken. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure where the disconnect was in that. We actually started that process yeah. in August. Yeah. And, um, and the superintendent was there. We were surprised as you were when we, we found out that they had, like Brody Deshea said, <laughs> hey, we, we don't know about this. We're like, huh? We talked about this in August, mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and she was there. So somewhere I get lost in translation on their end. Yeah. Um, and uh, being new to this, I, I, I assume we had plenty of time, but I'm thinking August, March, I think we've got a long way to go. We should be able to pull this together. And that also my thought process was personally, hey, we're not reinventing the wheel. We already have an SRO. This, these, you know, both the selectmen and the budget committee have been through this already. So they have a, you know, a good basis for all the information about why we need one, how we need one. You know, the only difference is you know, having the stats to back up a second person. And so I thought it wasn't that much, you know, and it wasn't much of a, of a, of a bar. And, um, and you know, we, we had a really good feeling after that August school safety meeting that it was going to be overwhelming. Well, we, it would vote in the, people would vote in the favor of it. Um, I felt really confident about that, and uh, you know, not so much the, you know the budget committee <laughs> or or even you folks, but if I, was the, I knew if it got to the people, it, it would pass. And so uh, you know, the how it, it did pass and the numbers by it passed by both on the school district side and, and the town side didn't didn't surprise me at all. But your point is well taken. I, I understand that now. And and the good news is, you know, real bad thing. You, you see a good thing. The Nashville shooting, awful, obviously. Um, but the good news is that uh, I don't know if you saw it. The police chief's uh, press conference. They found out through the manifest she avoided the public schools because of the SROs, because of the the young person being there. Um, so that's yeah. good news. Right, that's that's exactly what we want, right? And so it well, saved a lot of lives having them there. And she went to the private school that did not have it. And she yeah. documented it. Christian Academy. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know why she ended up at the Christian Academy? People don't really even understand. Um, do a deep, deep dive on it. Um, she um, yeah. is a transgender individual, yeah. and she. Um, for a long time was at the Christian school and um, when she was trying to um, understand her identity, she was getting a lack of support from the Christian school and from her home life where they were not accepting what her um, opinion of her sexuality was. This is a very difficult conversation to have. Because of that, this went on for 15 years, she created a deep animosity for those individuals in her life. And that is why, and she was being, um, she was seeing um, mental health for that issue that was um, being, um, predicated by her parents because they said that she was not correct in the head 
because she was um, associating as a female when they said that she wasn't. This is the facts. You don't have to like. Well, them. I know about them. But well, it is, I mean, but well, well it, it's, it's three nine-year-old kids yeah. had nothing to do Correct. with any of this. Correct. And that's you're, you're that's a terrible right. tragedy. And like well, I said, what we, we do, you know, that I mean, we don't need to deal with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awful. We it's need just to that, stop. But, yeah, but we do know that. Yeah. It, yeah. That saved lives, happened to you know, people in the schools, yeah. and, all right. uh, which we all know. So, it, you have anything yeah, else on the budget? Well, yeah, the thing is, is, what I think you did, have done very well is I already know you want one officer for three years. That you started signaling beforehand. You kind of let us realize that that is going to be coming, and that really helps that we have that kind of information, and that was in that, that part of the budget that Dean had written on, mm -hmm. and that does signal, and it was talked about at the budget committee. So when it shows up next year, they're not going to be surprised. So the more of that kind of background information and getting it out to us and letting us realize where you're going is really helpful. We support it, but yeah. when what I say is, somebody will see me on the street and ask me a question, and as whether you as a commission or me as a board of selectmen member, I like to be able to answer that. And when you produce that information, it makes it easier for me to answer those questions too. Yeah, yeah I had quite a few. <laughs> uh, but but mostly, yeah, I, I never had a negative one yeah. ever on that issue at all. And um, and I usually answer it by the efficiency of tax money, right? I, I said, this is great. They're in the way you need them during the school year. And the day school gets out, you have now it would be two offices to put on the road to handle our population swing from 6,000 to 26,000. It's super efficient, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're where they need to be at certain times of the year. <coughs> and uh, so, okay. yeah. Anybody have anything else in reference to that? Do you have any questions of us on that? Maybe not. this point? I would just offer the, uh, for something of your own uh, knowledge, we had the posting of the retirement of uh, canine rigs. We put that, it was put on Facebook by the uh, police department. So if you're curious about what the thinking was, the response, uh, refer to that. It's getting quite a bit of comments. It was nicely done. I read it yeah, today. It was. It was I just really read it, it just done. came on today. Yeah. yeah. Whoever posted it. Yeah. I, I had a, um, Conversation with the officer before he was retired, and he, and, well, and and with Dean, and he explained the whole situation why they were retiring the dog and why the program isn't going to continue. And we heard it came to the board at yeah. a board of selectmen's meeting about a month ago, I think, about the first of March. Yeah. And I'm glad you got that out. Maybe Clark could go <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anything else in reference to budgets right now? Well, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. I have one other Dean. business that I wanted to bring up. Yeah. Well, them. I, let's just get with the them. Though, too. Oh, with them? Yeah, okay. Because they Go might ahead. be involved. Uh, and I, I brought it up to Jim earlier today, and I brought it up with uh, Commissioner Coop. Uh, the school bus is a carpenter. Uh, I know I, I, it must be now in the last couple of years that. When the, when the door is open now, the sign automatically deploys in the bus, which then stops traffic for sometimes up to 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes at night. Uh, I drove through that back parking lot at Carpenter, and I, I just can't see why those buses can't, one, pick the kids up at the back of the school, mm -hmm. which I would think would be safer anyways, because you're never guaranteed a kid's not gonna run out in the road anyways. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, I mean, it literally stops traffic. I mean, it, it, I don't, I don't have, I don't want to complain about it. It, but it literally stops traffic for 15 or 20 minutes on and off. So I didn't know if that's something that, that is a, was decided upon by the police department or if the school decided they were going to do that. Brian says he's brought this up before and had them parking out back for a while. So um, I have 14 years at the Carpenter School, two different principals. Um, uh, it is state and federal RSA and has been forever that if a bus stops to put children on or off, you have to stop. The lights go on, the sign goes up. This has happened since we were kids. Sure. That's just a law. Um, they have gone in front, then to the back, and then back to the front again. There's the issue of where they used to park in the town hall, and the town hall had, in, 
had a problem, they said we can't park there, you, they, they couldn't have staff park there anymore, that they couldn't pick up there anymore, so then they had to pick up and back. So it's been an ongoing issue. Um, if we had a big chunk of change, we could fix it, and I've said this about eight or 10 years ago. There is a lot of land that is owned on the back side of where the existing playground is that goes down to Lerner Street. And the buses could come in School Street through the back parking lot, down the hill to Lerner <coughs> Street, and go right or left and, and get out but of... they can go out the, next to the school, too. There's two ways out of the school parking lot in the back. Yeah. Two ways out of the school yeah. parking yeah. lot. Yeah, they can go up and make a left by the Pickering House. They can't make a right because it's all football right there. Or they can go back out the same way they, they came I out. don't think they can fit beside on the dirt road beside the Pickering House. Well, there's plenty of room. There's back. plenty of room. But they can only make a left at the end. That's up to them. But I just, I, I don't, I mean, it's just, it's, it's something, you know, maybe going to the summertime after after May, yeah. that, would, that, that just, I, I just don't see why they Talk, yeah, can't. Talking to the buses it's before. It's a big they, area yeah, back there. Yeah, talking to the buses before, they said that they. But Linda was a teacher too, yeah. so. No, they, I, they said that they, I, they, I they told me that they can't. <laughs> They said that they can't drive on the dirt road through by the Pickering House, and by the way, we don't own that. That's owned by the Pickering House. Okay. So they would have to give us the authorization to let the buses well, the go through. the school has a right of way over. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, I think it, they do too. It's, it's, they do. It's dirt, and it would have to be tarred, <laughs> and there's trees that would have to be taken down. Um, there's uh, granite bollards that would have to be moved, and then when it pulls in, that's the teacher parking lot, you'd have to have all the parking lot cars gone because there's no way that they can make the corner well, and get through there. We're not going to solve that. <laughs> yeah, you, you'd lose all the teacher parking spots that, you know, you'd have to move 15 cars and then they'd be parking across the street and leasing them across the street at the church again. Um, but there is a there is a solution. It would, it would cost some money. It would mean that you take and you just continue a driveway down out on Learner Street. The, the, for, for a lot, it's a lot that's owned by the school department. Yeah. And it's been sitting there forever. I, I've had, uh, my oldest daughter is 52, so I've been in and out of the school yeah. bus in the beginning, in the back, in the, and I, I'm with Luke. You know, maybe in the winter it's okay for them to be out there, but if we start getting there in May, yeah. it's going to tie this town up in knots. And I'm not sure they realize to what degree. And I think it's worth a conversation. Yeah, with the school system, I'm with I'm with you, Luke. You know, for years they were always in the back, and then somebody got the idea in the front. Well, that was always pretty dangerous, because the police officer would come out from behind the the bus, and you, uh, yeah, right. um, and so then they put him in the back again. And so I I just yeah, think were, that that's a solid for, for idea to have a conversation, yeah, so time. we can yeah. you know yeah. in those but if they in were, the winter yeah, they, they need out, to, but during they were those out time. front for years, and the yeah. stop sign would they would. Still load actively Correct. load, but there must have, there must be a change in, in the school bus like that now when you open the door it automatically turns the sign on or something. It does, yeah. So that that's yeah. why that. I'm not sure if you can override them. I guess you can. You wouldn't want. I, I wouldn't. You know that would that would present a safety issue yeah. too. But yeah. I'm yeah. I'm glad you brought it up because it, honestly it's a pet peeve of mine. I, I I'm I don't like I don't like the why current. You contact them. And <laughs> um, Guys, you, you, get more power? you just been okay. There you yeah, go. Right. <laughs> Dude, open my mouth again. Um, but I, I like the way that it, it was when um, you know when I first started on the PD and when I grew up here, and, and I'm just used to that. Yeah. Um, the, the current way, it I get people hollering at me and the oh, other yeah. officers. And you know, this morning I, I we wrote me a ticket almost. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> <laughs> but but there there are those times like when, uh, this morning where. Um, you have a driver who's already passed the school oh, bus. You know, yeah, right. and, and, and then you try to tell the person behind him to stop, but you're waving the other, and they're all confused, yeah. and I'm confused. Yeah. I'm yeah. trying not to get run over. But um, the, the other thing, too, and, well, the, the PD had nothing to do with that. Um, so I think it's we all pretty much at the PD have a, um, a it, similar opinion that. Isn't this something that really happened? Because before COVID, I thought they were all going to the back of the... They were. No, they, they were on. going to the front, then they went to the back because of COVID. Yeah, yeah. They split because of COVID. Well, I think, it were, I think well, my kids were there, it was always in the back. Yeah. Then when my grandkids were there, it was in the front. Yeah, because it know, seemed like... And then they recall, moved it to the back again. There was always a stream of buses when I, when I moved into the town manager's office that were always going to the back of the building. Mm -hmm. and yeah. It, it, 
Then I recall in COVID, <clears throat> there was a, a breakdown of where parents were going based on age groups and alphabet and... Yes, that was COVID. So they Linda, when, when it was in the back, did, they, did the school staff still park in that parking lot? Or they, there was no parking lot. When my older kids, oh, when my kids were there, when my grandkids were there, they did put that parking lot in, but they still were putting the buses through yeah. the back of it. And what it also yep. did, it was a nice place, then it opened the front for parents just to drive up, yep. drop their kids off, mm -hmm. and you could stay there and see them get into the building. School. Safely. You know, I used to drop my grandkids off there, and that's what I do. I drop them off, wait. I saw they were in the building, and I could go off. So there was a real nice flow in the front of the building. So I can't see why they can't get the buses back there. They could, should be able to stagger them to do that. And I, and I think it's a conversation with them. Yeah, um, and I just had one other point that I wanted to make. Um, a couple weeks ago, I was on Union Street at the corner of school, and I don't know if anybody's been down there when schools... Um, it was when the, it was school was getting out, and it's just an accident waiting to happen. Oh, yeah. Heaven forbid a pedestrian or a child, but um, and, and then you have people stopping to turn left um, from Lander Street left on a school street, and then you have people passing them on the left side and zigzagging through. It's just it's an absolute nightmare. Absolutely, yeah. I agree with you. I yep. picked up a kid in the back there the other day, and it is, and people, and then they get blocked up because. The buses are stopping, so they can't go out. So that whole area just yeah. jams. I agree and, with and you. A different dynamic too. We have now versus years ago, right? It was back then, how many parents drove their kids to school? They didn't. Now <laughs> everybody does. <laughs> so I'm thinking, if you have the buses in the back, have the people with vehicles come yeah. in the front. Yep. There you go. That that kind of breaks things up, and and then you know the traffic's not being impeded because people don't have to stop for a car. Right. They're loading the kids. Yeah. The kids. So um, yeah. So is, is that would you reach out to the superintendent on that issue or the principal? I, I think the superintendent. I think I'd start with the transportation, transportation office. Yeah. Okay. That's where I'll start. That's, yeah. And that's at SAU? Yeah. Because yeah. 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 now they have, I guess it's Jan Brooks and Mary Myers are the two filling in because the principal at Carpenter um, had left. So Jan's seen it every way from Sunday, right? Yes. Yeah. Over the years. Absolutely. She would be a key one to talk to, too, because she has. Sure. Was she there when you were there, Guy? Jan? Yeah. She was. Yeah, I thought yes. so. Yes. I thought so. Yeah. Jan's just okay. on for three months, she told me. Three months, a couple days a week, two or three days a week to take the pressure off of um, Mary because Mary was thrown right into the fray again. Guy and I were in the same class. We were in Judy Bodecker's class. Oh. We were typewriter, right? Judy Bodecker's. And Dr. Latt? And Dr. Latt. Yeah. Made my first salad. Yes. Yeah. My daughter had the John the came, was after you guys. Yeah, right? He was in, he was in, my oldest and my youngest were in Dr. Lance's class. Or I didn't do at the time. Okay, anything else? We could sit here and go all night. Are you ready to go home, Dave? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, this was nice, too. Yeah. This was nice, yeah. Yep. yeah. Really nice. Okay. Thank you for inviting us. Well, we'll invite you again. Yes. Right. So I gave Jim a copy of this of all the all the ticket information and all this, it's okay. If they, yeah. Did anyone else want a copy of this? I'll scan, have it scanned tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If getting it scanned would be great. Yep. This one probably does. Okay, we got any other business? Anybody got any? No, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.